Hey y'all, and welcome to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm TZ Sweezy, and in this video, I'm going to be covering the Solidify modifier. Now, the Solidify modifier takes the surface of any mesh object, either in part or in full, and it adds depth to it, making them solid objects instead of hollow frames. All right, so right now we have a cube, and I'm just gonna go ahead and add the Solidify modifier to it, and nothing has really happened that we can see. But if we enter into wireframe mode and then zoom in a little bit, what we can see is that now there's actually some depth between these objects. We can't see it all that well though because you know it's inside our cube, but you can see it with the wireframe. So let's talk now a little bit about some of the settings of the Solidify modifier and we'll end with using the Solidify modifier in a modifier stack to create a slide. All right, so right off the bat, we have the thickness setting, and the thickness is just how much displacement there will be between the outside original mesh and the inside new mesh here. So as you increase the thickness, you know, you can see that the distance between them is getting uh, larger. But you can take this too far and create it in such that now this face and this face are actually the pieces that are apart from each other. Um, and so it's now going in the opposite direction here. And so that's something we want to try to avoid doing, but just know that that will happen or can happen. Now we also have the offset here and it works with thickness a little bit, but its job is to locate the solidified output final mesh, either inside or outside the original mesh. So if here's our original mesh, then this is our new solidified mesh and it's currently inside because offset is negative one. But if we move the offset to one, then our thickness, as we increase it, makes the outside bigger. Also, if we put this at zero, it's trying to locate it on the original. So as we change thickness, it's actually shrinking uh, the inside and increasing the outside. All right, so that's how the offset works. There's you know a little bit that you can play around with here but I'm going to generally leave it at negative one as offset, but you can do either of them. And then to show you this final setting that we're gonna talk about with the cube, it's the clamp setting. I'm just going to inset this face real quick and then pull it up. Now the clamp's job is to prevent intersection of mesh. So it's to prevent you from being able to take it too far, you know, like this and then inverting that mesh. So what I'll do is if I'll increase the clamp up and then I'll just increase the thickness and you see that after a certain point, the inside mesh no longer moves, All right? So if I decrease that thickness, I can get it back out to the original shape and then take it backwards. But if I increase it, it'll eventually stop and that clamp value uh, will determine where it stops between zero and two. All right, now it still can cause some self-intersection. Um, you know, it's not perfect, but that's just the clamp value. Okay, so to move on to some of the other ones with the, like we have a vertex group one here in the crease, we're gonna switch to some different objects. So let's go ahead and talk about how we narrow the solidify modifier's scope of influence to just be on certain vertices. All right, so here we have a basic cap that you might see in an animation or a game or whatever or you know, even worn on people outside in real life. But what we have is the solidify modifier applied evenly across the entire cap. Now, that's fine if the cap is going to be pulled off. Uh, you'll see you know, the inside of it at some point in the animation or if it's possible during the game and you don't want it to appear like the hat is see-through, right? Applying the solidify modifier to it is great. But if the hat's never going to come off the character or you're never going to see it through the bottom in an animation, then you don't need these extra vertices that'll need to be calculated and textured and all of that. So what we can do is we can apply our solidify modifier directly to a vertex group. Now, once you've set up your vertex group, all you have to do is go to the solidify modifier, click on the vertex group icon, select the vertex group, and now you'll see that only the vertices that are in that group are the ones being solidified. Whereas the rest of the hat past here is not being solidified at all. So it's not creating any extra or useless geometry. Now you can also invert that if you would prefer that 
the hat be solid or whatever object be solid everywhere except for that vertex group. So just click this little button here and it will invert your solidify option. And then everything except what's in that vertex group will be solidified. All right, so that is the vertex group option to apply the solidify modifier to a specific group of vertices. Now let's move on to the last little piece where we look at the rest of the settings in one more object that's a little more complicated than these other two. All right, so for the last little bit of our solidify modifier, I want to show you how it can be used to create a slide or something to be you know, real smooth and solid. So right off the bat, we have um, just our modifier stack here. I am mirroring what is on here. At this point, I haven't covered the mirror modifier yet, but it's pretty easy. It just mirrors across a given axis. Um, you can merge vertices that are within a certain limit to each other, or and you can mirror across objects and other things. So that's pretty much it uh, for the mirror modifier. So there's your covered mirror modifier. Then we have the solidify modifier here, and we have, um, now if I'm bringing this on, we have a certain thickness here. I can bring that down just a little bit. I don't need to clamp it to anything. Uh, then we have a subdivision surface modifier on it, making it very smooth, which is good, but it kind of distorts the shape that we were going for. Then I have an array modifier to give me or as many of these pieces as I need, and then I finally rounded it off with a curve modifier here so that we have our slide that follows along on the curve that I had created. This doesn't look all that great at the moment. It's got all those creases in it, so let's try to remove those. So right off the bat, let's look at fill rim or only rim. All right, so um, if I turn off the subdivision surface modifier, what you can see here is that it's filled. Now, if I uncheck that, you can now see the difference between the original and the uh, newly created solidified mesh. So if I increase the thickness, it goes away. Right? And you can choose to fill the rim, and then you can choose to have only the rim so that all of the extra generated is not actually generated. So if I then flip these normals, right, from the bottom, it looks like you know the actual real-world uh, water slide that you would see, all those little plastic pieces with the bottom piece here. And then as you increase or decrease the thickness, it changes the size of the little pieces here. But I don't like that, so I'm going to turn the normals back to normal, uh, and then I'm going to fill in the rim as well. Now you have the option to also do an even thickness, just to prevent things, some parts of it from being uh, a lot more thick than other parts. And you can do some high quality normals here as well. If I turn back on my subdivision surface, I still have these creases. And so what we can do is we have options to play with the crease as it's getting created. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the rim crease up. Now the rim is going to access this little piece here, right? So it's going to affect that. So if I increase the rim piece, you can see it starts to become, um, you know, a lot sharper. Then if I go on the outer edge, which is the original mesh at this point, I increase that. Now we've got a very, a much more blocky version of it. And you can see that this is basically flat as opposed to before when it was still very curved and uh, pointed in. And then if I do the inner piece, right, we still have the creases here. If I bring the inner pieces up, then now we have a completely smooth slide. All right, and then if you flip normals on that, this whole thing is going to be invisible if you were to drop it into Unity, but nevertheless. All right, so this has been the Solidify Modifier video. It is a very powerful tool, but it does duplicate all of your vertices and it will duplicate your vertex count. So as you get into more subdivided uh, meshes, you might find yourself needing a lot higher process time. So be careful of when and how you use the solidify modifier, create the vertex groups if you need to. And uh, hopefully this helps. All right, I'm Teasy Sweezy and I will see you in the next video.